Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we're back and we're doing a best of three M21 draft. All right, draft has fired. What do we got here? So, my first thought was mm, the scythe because it's one of the few equipment cards in the set besides like short sword, and it just plays really well. It's one of the key pieces to the Rakdo sack deck, I I would say. Our rare is Containment Priest, which I'm not going to take. There is Carrying Grub, which I haven't played, but is probably a pretty strong card. I mean, depends on how many 4-plus power guys you have in your deck. I mean, if you're paying 4 mana and you get a 4-5, I'd say you got a good deal. If you're paying 4 mana and you get a 3-5, it's okay. It's not a great deal. So Grub is actually something you can consider too. There also is Swift Response, which is removal. But I really like the Scythe. And like I said, it's one of the key cards for the Rakdos Sack deck. And it gets big quick. I mean, you get two counter, you get one counter on there. You're paying one mana for plus two, plus two. That's pretty good. Follow-up pick. Well, there's Eliminate. It goes well with our Scythe because it's cheap removal that deals with quite a few things and on in the same color there is palladium mirror which is more for i mean it's a good card for any deck you pay you play that on turn three you can play a six drop on turn four or two three drops on turn four that's pretty accelerant that is pretty accelerant and i'm more on board with just picking the best card in the first few packs but if it's equal or close to equal then it's okay to try and go for your something that connects with your first pick here i mean it just sort of makes sense to me to take eliminate it's good removal i've seen eliminate played quite a bit in the format and it plays well it's on color with our first pick and the next closest is probably palladium mirror which is arguably better depending on what kind of deck you're playing. Well, third pick Grasp seems good to me. Uh, otherwise, Visionary is in here. I love the Visionary, and I feel like I haven't really played Rock much at all in this format. I'm not sure if I ever have played Rock in this format. Grasp also deals with some some pesky cards in this format, like uh, Hollow, Hollow Blade and uh, Brash Taunter, which is not to be overlooked, because those cards are real real nasty so let's take the grasp all right so what do i see that's relevant here i mean meteorite is more playable than it appears but it tends to go pretty late no one really cares about it crypt lurker if i do want to be able to go down the racto sack path i'd want crypt lurker but we really haven't seen much red there's just a burn bright left in here this pack is overall just sort of weak, though. Crypt Lurker might just be the best card. It's a playable black card, so it's on color with what we've got. We can still go a few directions. It gives us a little bit of side synergy, perhaps. Otherwise, I'm taking, like, Meteorite or Frantic Inventory, maybe early, to see if I can make the, the inventory plan come together. Otherwise, Dilophosaur, playable, not exciting. Indulgence, playable, but not great outside of Black White Life Gain. There was like the Dual Land, which we maybe could have taken. We could take Rise again here. Gives us a res target. Otherwise, maybe Black White is a path we can go down. The white, Both white cards in here are pretty playable. Chorister might make more sense for our deck because of the lifelink then we have a side target that makes it a little bit better uh i've never been blown away by rise again is my problem i'm okay trying the chorister i mean if we do black white life gain you're definitely going to want some lifelinkers it's also Sanctum. Shrines are tough. The shrines are tough to make work. 
So there are a few red cards in here, which might be a good sign for us still going Rakdos, but none of them are, like, amazing. Magmut, most playable of the three. Crash Through is more of an is it enabler deck. And then Bone Pit Brood is just sort of a random six drop that's not great for anything. There's a Mutt in white, a Watchdog. Neither of them are really what the Black White Life Gain deck is looking for. We can take Village Rights. It's playable in the Sack deck. It's good with Scythe. It's uh, otherwise Dismal Backwater, random Blue Fixer. I think I'll take the Rights. There's also Truffle Snout. This is more of a Selesnia card, but playable, definitely. Okay. Hobble Fiend picks seven. Not a bad sign. Also, Cage Zombie, another Rakdos Sack card. So, there's still a chance we can make Rakdos Sack work. There's also Chrome Replicator. Good card in general if you have multiples. It's still early enough where we can try and coordinate some plan for that. Warded Battlements. Not a bad card, I don't think. I'll take the Fiend here, though. Really good synergy with the Scythe. I guess the, the difficult part about Rakdos Sack is it's like a two-fold plan. You need cards that let you sack and cards that give you benefit from sacking. So, not exactly an easy deck to build. Fetid Imp, good wheel here. Uh, Fierce Empath would actually be a decent card with the Scythe, too. Find a six drop and then you get another body that can buff your Scythe. But Imp flies, it's evasive. It's going to be good. It's on color with the rest of our deck right now, so I'm on board with that. Ooh, got the Carrying Grub back. Well, we can try it. I mean, seeing it pick nine is actually a pretty good sign, too. It's a card that I think does make sense for the sack deck as well. Couple red cards going around. That's good. Radiant Fountain. Good card for Black White Life Gain, which is still something we could pivot into. Or else Alchemist Gift. Playable, not exciting. Duress, more of a sideboard card. We'll, we'll take the fountain. Okay. Let's see here. Sage, Vine, Blossoming Sands. Uh, none of them are particularly exciting. Bind actually does have good synergy with Scythe. Okay. Sage is more playable, but I guess Bind does make more sense if we're going to still possibly pivot. Meteorite on the wheel is not a terrible thing, actually. It's, it's fine. Indulgence is a payoff card for black-white, though. I still think I go Meteorite. There might be something I want with it. I'll take the black card here, because we're not sure if red's going to work out. I don't really like Turret Ogre all that much anyway. Which is weird, because it is a lot of abilities tacked on to, to it. It's a 4 mana, 4, 3. It's got reach. It deals damage. You'd think, how could that combination come together and not be great? But somehow it manages to do it. It's just like whatever. Not incredible. All right, Freebooter here is just, it's been too good for me, this format. Really incredible card. Steals the best removal out of your opponent's hand, and then they're forced to use more removal to get it back on your 1-2. It also is flying, so good for our side. Next, uh, Grim Tutor is, I'm sure it's fine if we had something insane to search for. We don't, and we're not necessarily going to find something. And then there's Sanctum of Stonefangs, which is probably one of the better shrines, if not the best. But I'd still rather have the Freebooter. And then there's a Visionary, also good. But we'll take the Freebooter. We're still... We're, like, ready to pivot into any of these decks. Well... There's a rousing reed in blue. That'd be yet another direction to pivot. None of the four white cards in here are particularly exciting. There's an experimental overload, or we're too far from that. There's a replicator. We have no doubles of creatures yet, but we could still find it. There's 
Pyranodon, which does actually wear Scythe pretty well. It also blocks early. I might be okay with Tyranodon. It's a cheap creature. It can block. We don't have any four power creatures, but we do have Scythe. Or else we just take the Replicator, hope we find some doubles. I might be okay with that. It is a five mana card, but I've had some success with Replicator. I think I'm going to take it. All right, Dryad is cool. There's a Brash Taunter in here, though. <laughs> I think we just take Taunter and be happy that we got a Taunter because this card is incredibly strong. A real big game flipper. This card, this pack is really strong. Taunter, Dryad, Stitcher. Uh, and then Visionary down here just chilling, too. So, good pack. But we'll take Taunter. It's it's incredibly strong. They can't attack into it unless they have Trample really comfortably. Um, they can't do anything about it otherwise if they can't attack into it because you're just fighting their strongest creature and dealing just a boatload of damage to them. So it's like stops their attacks and punishes them for not attacking. Such a strong card. Shock, pretty easy here. Maybe we can finally just accept we're going to try and make this deck work. Some good black in here as expected. I mean, I feel like we cut black pretty hard in pack one, so it doesn't come as a huge surprise. Bad deal in here. Another, the visionaries are just flowing. Um, we'll take the imp. Visionary is so good. I mean, it's possible we could play Meteorite and try and splash Taunter, but having Taunter and not playing it does seem bad. Imp is so playable on its own, I'm fine just picking it. It's such a great blocker, especially with like a Scythe. They don't really want to attack anyway. You're going to get to trade and make your Scythe better. I just like Imp. Well, definitely some green flowing here. Azusa is not that impressive, but the Hunter's Edge is quite good. Uh, we'll take the Hobble Fiend number two. Problem right now is we don't have any like Deathbloom Thalids or Arsonists. Things that we want to sack and get good value out of. We don't have that right now. But still time hopefully to find it. All right, we got the Arsonist. I'd much rather have that than the Steward. Steward is actually pretty reasonable with the scythe, but I'd much rather have Arsonist. Holds down the fort so well early on. And then great mid to late sack with the scythe and a hobble fiend. Buff this, buff this, ping something. Alright, Warmonger is one of the better payoffs for this deck, so we'll take it. So right now we actually have all the good sack stuff and only one good sack payoff. So I'd like some more sack payoffs. There's also a late riddle form in here. Pick eight. Igneous Kerr. I've I've come around on quite a bit as the format's moved on. I like it. Cage Zombie is an actual good card for this deck, so we might just take it even though the caves are in here. But... I guess not because we're going to be able to make a deck and there's no guarantee Cage Zombie makes the the 23. Honestly, it probably would, but I'd probably still rather just have a Caves now and worry about finding something for it later. Bone Pit Brute, not a great card, but I'm not going to play Prismite. All right, we can take Turn to Slag. Infernal Scarring. I guess is okay with the flyers, actually. But I think we'll take a turn to slag. What's our removal looking like right now? Shock, Eliminate, Grasp, Meteorite. 
I mean, we need some more creatures in here, but we'll figure it out. Well, Blackguard, I think I like more than Corpse, just because you can flash it in. I don't think either I'd like to make the deck. So otherwise, it's Duress for Sideboard. I'd probably take the Duress, actually. It just seems unlikely I'll play either of those cards. Bad Deal, not that great. Late Green. And last pick, Steward, which we could actually play. Veto. Well, this card is very strong. Whether or not you're in Black White Life Gain or not, um, just giving your guys lifelink can do a lot. So we'd probably take it. Otherwise, Immolator is great. It also It's kind of perfect for our deck because you sack it. Like you stick a side on that. Sack it, kill something, three power, put a counter on that. It's good value, but it's tough to go wrong with. I mean, this is insane. Give all your things lifelink and then they lose life for all that life you gained when they either chump or trade in combat. I think it's just too good to ever pass Veto when you're in black. Too much upside. So we can take Blightfang here. It's just a good card. I mean, we also, it, it helps that we have double fed at him so we can give him death touch and drain him even more. It's also just a great roadblock creature. There's another imp in here, which we wouldn't mind wheeling. I'm sure Blightfang wears a scythe pretty nicely too. So Duress is in the sideboard. I don't know if we want a bone pit brute. Havoc Jester is actual. This unfortunately, this this pack has everything we want in it. I think we take the Jester because we already have. We already have Lurker. It's good with Grub. It's good with Warmonger. It's good with Hobble Fiends. And it's okay with Village Rights as well and Steward. So we have the synergies. It's one of the big sacrifice payoff cards. Immolator would be incredible. Style, it's exactly what we need, but I'm going to take the Jester. All right, we, we can get a Thalad now. This card kind of makes sense for our deck, too. You can just sack stuff and then draw a bunch of cards, perhaps. I do like that. We're still creature light, though, aren't we? Well, we got 15. That's actually reasonable. So, yeah, really the choices are Standard Bearer, the Rare, or Thalad. I mean... I suspect things on our team are going to die, so probably makes sense that we would want Standard Bearer to draw a bunch of cards. And it's rare. I guess we take it. It's hard not to take a card that seems to fit with our deck quite well. All right, now we get the Thalad. Thankfully, the Thalad's flowed late. We're going to take it over to Sanctum, the Archer, Magma, all that stuff. I don't know if we need the Meteorite anymore. Probably rather just pay for a turn to slag. Um, we do actually have some two ofs for Replicator, which is a good sign. I'd like to find some more. Another Thalad. All right, we're getting the big time. We're getting the good stuff now. So I'm going to take it over the third Hobble Fiend. And um, This deck really came together nicely in, in pack three, I'll say that. Probably dump the steward. Much rather just have a Thalid. We have enough ways to sack, right? I don't think we need the steward anyway. All right, Arsonist here. I love Arsonist. Great sack target. We already have two Hobble Fiends. We have ways to sack, so Arsonist to me makes sense. Take it over a third Hobble Fiend. And now the deck's really coming together nicely. That's great. So we can take the Cage Zombie. Makes sense for the deck. If you have controlled sack, making them lose two life is actually a pretty big upside. Alright. Don't really need any of this. Swindler is a black white life gain card. Corpse is just random black two drop that works with like uh devotee since it's a zombie, maybe. Late Arcanist. I guess Thrill, but, I mean, we're not going to play it or the Onaki Ogre, so it doesn't matter. That's a late Obsessive Stitcher. We're not splashing white. 
I guess it doesn't matter. I'll just take the Stitcher. Archer is playable. I don't think this deck needs it, which is a good sign. When you don't have to play Archer, your deck's in good shape. All right, we'll take another zombie. We might even try and make it work just as a means to turn on our Replicator even more. Actually, Tampering can be a valuable sideboard card. So we have to make three cuts. And we even got the late Hobble Fiend. I think we're going to try and make that work. I think it's possible we can make a 16 land deck even. I don't know if I need the Grub. Grub at best is a 4 mana 5-5, five five, which is good. But it means we would have to mill our Havoc Chester, which I don't know I'd, if I'd want that anyway. So we probably just dump the what was it the grub i think it's a good card i don't think our deck needs it i don't think it's part i don't think it's fitting with our our plan particularly well we've got a good like streamline streamlined archetype here so why try and mess with that i think replicator looks great in here though double archness double imp triple hobble fiend double thalid we have a lot of and double cage zombie a lot of means to turn on replicator probably don't need the turn to slag it is removal but we're already rocking what do we got shock eliminate double imp with death touch grasp blight fang got the death touch taunter kind of a huge roadblock we do have to make two more cuts. I'm not exactly sure what they are. I kind of like everything we're doing here. Probably the village rights can go. It just it works for the deck, but we have triple hobble. We we have the means to sacrifice triple hobble fiend, dire fleet warmonger, crypt lurker. How many creatures do we have? Twenty. It's okay to have a bunch of creatures in here too. I mean, they're there to be sacked or. Draw us cards, whatever. I mean, honestly, the last card that feels like it should get cut is probably a cage zombie, but it's helping the replicator plan. I mean, getting paying five mana for two four four bodies is big in limited. Very, very big. Hmm. I guess I can cut the cut a zombie. The other choice is maybe cut the Crypt Lurker, but do I need to cut I mean I can I can cut Crypt Lurker. I like the card for the archetype, but we might be we might be fine without it. Three fours are pretty good though. That four toughness goes a long way. Hmm. I think I'll cut a zombie. I want to keep the lurker around. It does slightly lower our Chrome Replicator synergies, but we still got, you know, four other cards that can do it. it. Seems worth it to me. I do like this deck quite a bit. I think it looks good. We'll probably do an even split. We really need both colors early. So even though we have more black than red, I think we're going to do an even split. All right. Well, here you have it. Racto Sack. Good looking deck. We'll see you round one. Round one, we've got a great keep here. Scythe is 
maybe next to Taunter the strongest card in our deck. One of the bigger payoffs we can we can have. Well, that's gonna die. Mentor is really good. And I guess we'll start with probably the hobble fiend. And also start with the imp. Imp flies. Hobble fiend can deal more damage though. Uh, we'll do hobble fiend. It's also got trample. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I can offer a trade since we have the standard bearer too. Well, Blightfang is Blightfang's pretty good. Um, let's go Blightfang here. Could have attacked first, but I'm not sure that actually makes sense. All right, leaving up some mana. So let's go. Uh, it's our best options here. I think we just attack with the Blight Fang. So we can sack. No, 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 don't. Oh, I guess it's actually okay to to use the red mana if we have all black in hand. And telegraphs that a little bit, but that's okay. So we can do the imp now, or we can do the salad. Or we can do the standard bear, which would let us draw a card to replace and get a 3-1. Those are all decent options. Let's see. I guess best use of mana is the Thalid. I'm going to hope to find some more ways to draw cards off Standard Bear. Like even just drawing a land going sack, sack, make this huge, play this, draw two. That's pretty good value. So if he taps them both... And attacks with Seed Striker. He's got double vigilance. I almost think I might just kill it. He kills both of our guys. But that Seed Striker is not getting any weaker either. Um, so he kills both our guys. We get a 1-1. One, one. Doesn't leave us with a lot of gasoline is the problem. I can always chump block this and sack though too. Let's just take six. It doesn't have trample. That is a big deal, actually. Um, so let's go land. Imp. Attack with Hobble Fiend. Actually, probably not attack with Hobble Fiend. Pass. My plan is chump lock the striker, block the steed, block the knight, sack the alid, kill knight. So this kind of holds back their attack a little bit. Secure the scene. Not super commonly used, honestly. But unfortunately, it doesn't kill it for standard bearer value. No attacks, though. All right. So we can get another Hobble Fiend out there. I like that. And, uh... I guess we still can't really play Scythe because of, uh... 
I want to keep up multiple sacks and still be able to give Death Touch for Hobble Fiend. Alright. Pretty surprising that he would do all three. Um, so let's just uh, block with that and um, sack it. I guess it does untap there. That makes sense. All right. So we can go side, we can equip to valid and pass. Alright, so they had the mutt. So our scythe is going away. So, block with the salad. Can sack the salad. And that's that. Alright, veto. Not bad, actually. Find some means to get lifelink going. some point. Hmm. So I think what we do is block here block here and block here and then we're going to sack this and then we're going to give this step that Seems fine to me. All right. So, play the caves. <laughs> yeah. We can attack with Hobble Fiend. Because they're going to keep getting in with the Seed Striker. They can attack with everything, though. I guess I can flash in the Standard Bear. So maybe we have to wait a little bit. 
longer. I don't think I'm blocking Seed Striker anyway. So if I get in with Hobble Fiend and I veto, we're, they're smashing back with everything. They're going to be able to tap these two at least. Maybe this two. Or another creature. I'm kind of out of chump blockers though. I might need to just do it. I mean, it's 10 points of... It's certainly not an insignificant amount of, of damage. But, I, I mean, I can't do anything about swift response. There was nothing I could do there. If I stay back, I'm not blocking Seed Striker, so... So I could have handled Seed Striker early, but it really would have left me in a pretty difficult situation. I wouldn't have had... I would have had a lot to get through without uh, they're only attacking with those two. All right, so we take 11. Um, like I would have been left with a 1-1 one, one basically, and I think that's likely not good enough. Eight mana. I guess I do have enough to block. And um, give lifelink. So. Maybe we. Wait, I forgot to flash in my standard bear. What am I doing? Alright, well I'm dead now. So I needed to flash in my standard bear. And uh, I just missed the step somehow. And uh, what would we? What would have happened? I would have blocked their two biggest, gained a little bit of life, probably stayed alive another turn. But I'm not sure what I would have been able to do after that. This definitely seems like a match we can win. Uh, absolutely, seems like a match we can win. We have arsonist to just <laughs> just ping off. We lose to a Siege Striker on turn like 9 or 10. Our deck is like 2 Arsonists, Eliminate, <laughs> Grasp, uh, Havoc Jester, just like Brash Taunter, every card. We have like 6 or 7 cards that very, very easily would have gotten out of that situation. <laughs> so I, I feel like this is a very winnable match. Like, I don't even need the Archer. I have so many other means to deal with that card. Oh. Did he have any other X1s for Archer? I can't recall now. No, it was all like 2 twos. Uh, I guess we'll we'll run it back. I think our main deck looks pretty good. All right, we'll play first. Yeah, it's a good hand. We're gonna start with the Bloodfell Caves. Do the hobble team first. So imps do get quite a bit better with the the Lord, the hooded blight thing. Hobble fiend is obviously pretty good for our deck too. So we'll kill that once again. Taunter is a good draw.
All right. We go imp number two here. So if I get a fourth land, I probably just play the Siege or the Crypt Lurker and not sack an Imp. I think an Imp is, is probably better than a random card in our deck. And then we're just still moving towards the uh, Brash Taunter so we can get in first, I guess. Well, Fates Fetters at least doesn't do amazing things against us because we have all of these sack outlets. So that's a good thing. It does gain them for life, but this is still quite good. Alright. I'm... Trying to figure out what they need all this mana for. Alright, I think we kill the Palladium Mirror in response. Because that way they don't get the... Uh, they don't get the creature. Alright, now we have Taunter, which is good. Pro Multicolored, yeah, that's fine. So, play the Taunter. Get in with the flyers. Pass. Taunter can just start fighting now, which is good. There's not a ton they can do about it. Yeah. Taunter's is one of those cards where it's like, I can't deal with this card. I'm done. Uh, their deck looks really, really good. They have Mentor, Basri's Lieutenant. So they right there are two of the strongest Selesnya counters cards. And they have Seed Striker with a bunch of Vigilant stuff. So they've got a good deck. Really good. Um, it tells me, they too, they probably have some means to put counters on the uh, Seed Striker. So pretty scary. Scary little deck they've got there. Could do the turn to slag to just as more removal. I don't love it. It's slow and they have other good value cards. Like at least Grasp still deals with Basri's Lieutenant. If they play it and they try and put a counter on it, you just kill it in response to the counter being put on there. So we've got some outs to everything we've seen from what I can remember. Village Rights wouldn't be bad here either. They have double swift response fates fetters. But like I said, we have the sack outlet, so it's like I'm not sure if we need them. Flight Fang looks really good at least. I might just have to be It's tough. I don't know who has the better late game plan. I'm thinking they probably have a better late game plan. And the only reason I'm thinking about that is how badly, how well can I play around swift response an entire game? It's going to be a little bit challenging, even though we're the sack deck. It's a little bit challenging to play around that. Like, Wormonger hates swift response. I don't want to sack a creature and then only to get this swift response. Grasp's a great draw. Gives us an out to some things. No turn to Mentor. Great sign. We have had about enough of that card. <laughs> I'll kill Seed Striker if I see it though. Easily. Hobble Fiend. Good draw. Let's do the... Uh... Let's do 
Let's do the Warmonger. The reason I'm doing Warmonger instead of Blightfang is I'd much rather them use something. This still puts a good creature on the board. And if they say have, they've missed their land drop. That's a good, that's good for us. But now we can play the Hobble Fiend. And that way, if we attack with Warmonger and they swift response it, we just sack it and put a counter on the Hobble Fiend. All right. And good. This that's about that's probably the best our our deck can do against a swift response. <laughs> All right, so we'll attack. If they have another swift response, so be it. We'll at least get those out of the way. It looks like they didn't have it. Now we can play the blight fang, which is a big deal. All right, they missed their land drops. We'll take whatever we get. Obviously, take a victory here. We'll see you round two. All right, round two. We'll play first. We'll keep it. Taunter, strongest card in our deck. We've got removal, death toucher. Looks good to me. Dalit is a good draw. Hmm. Already interested. Three color. Hmm. Mill deck. Okay. Taunter is a lot worse against the mill deck. That much is is true. Lost a couple of good cards there. All right, let's, uh, let's get in for four here. And next turn, I guess we drop the replicator unless there's something I can end up fighting with this taunter. Oh man, they're four for four on uh, hitting non-land cards. Ranadon, sure. We can eliminate that, though. I mean, I wouldn't mind taunting and fighting it, too. But I think that right now, we're just in a rush to get that damage through. Grasp. Well, I guess it can get rid of a blocker. Uh, yeah, they're going to exile it, too. Uh, let's drop the replicator. Get the big dog down. All three of our hobble fiends? That's crazy. All right, we're down to 17 cards after this. All right, there's the lands. Uh-oh, Blight Fang. Oh, no. All right. Standard Bear. Standard Bear probably deals some more damage. Uh, we can grasp the vine. I think we really want to push that damage through quick. And we don't want them to sack and get value from vine, so. Alright. Kill that. Get in for five. And then pass. Sky scanner. Hmm. We got twelve cards left in our deck here. And another Tyranodon, okay. So they could double block the replicator. 
but I think we just drop. Well, if I drop standard bearer and attack, they just block with the sky scanner. That doesn't seem great, but drawing cards actually doesn't seem great for us either. And you have 12 left. I guess it doesn't technically. No, I guess it does actually affect our, our number. Hmm. Four cards left in hand. Hmm. I guess we pass. Because I do think they're going to double block. Oh, there's chumping. Okay. So... We can go Taunter now and uh, can fight their Tyranodon, I guess. We're down to nine cards left in the deck. Alright, so we're down to seven cards left in the deck. So we can fight the Coatl. We don't want to draw a bear, I don't think, anymore. Not with six cards left in our deck. So, at least I don't think so. It's cutting it too close. I think we just play the standard bear now before things die. Um, and then we get in with these two. And we're going to fight the Kawadal. All right. So they get this turn to take us out. All right, cool. Like, uh, cutting it close. So they're they're really all in on that. Uh, they are all in on Teferi's tutelage, and we don't have a means to really deal with it. It is not an artifact, as it turns out. So. Is removal worse? Probably. Removal's still good, though. It's not like they're not running creatures. And Eliminate still deals with some pretty important ones. Tyranodon, Coatl, Skyscanner, I guess not as much, but Skyscanner's not a big deal either Either way. Carrying Grub looks quite a bit better, but I can't afford to mill myself four. I was just thinking the creatures in the graveyard are going to be there, but I can't afford to mill four. Taunter still ended up doing its job, even in this match. It could Duress. Duress is, takes out the tutelage plan. Yeah, I, I can see that, especially if they have multiple tutelage. Wait. Maybe we just play Necromentia too. Like if we if we name Tutelage before they resolve it, that's like their whole plan. Like I feel like we could beat everything else in their deck. That's the only way they're gonna beat us. So maybe we drop. Uh, we can drop like a Cage Zombie. And maybe the, the standard bear. Not that I don't like drawing cards, just. It doesn't pair super well against their creatures. All right. I'm actually sideboarding into Necromentia. Never thought I'd see the day. All right.
Hmm. I'm not in love with this hand, but we are on the draw. We need black mana pretty badly. We do have nine sources. We're on the draw. We can play the arsonist. And if we get the black mana, we get the freebooter. I'm going to try it. This is pretty high upside if we can if we can hit freebooter. That's pretty high upside. We're going to still be able to get two lids before they can resolve it. Now, granted, it hinges on getting that black mana right now. But I'd say it's worth the worth a go here. All right. We missed it. All right, that's good. Let's do the uh, let's do the free booter. And if they remove it, we'll just hobble fiend it. Uh, lofty denial and reign of revelation. Well, it's good to see some uh, some things there. Uh, no other tools. They have another tyranodon. All right. I guess we wait. So they have rain revelation now, but they're not, not in a big rush to do it. Uh, so we can do the salad. Yeah, that makes sense. And we can pay for lofty denial. We do have to, I mean, we know about it, so let's pay attention to it, I guess. I can sack the arsonist, which I probably do. Ping them. They're just going to rain a revelation here, so. All right, with that too. All right, so. They have Lofty Denial, but now we can Grasp, Sack, and still pay for Lofty Denial. So, we do that. We Sack this. Grasp one of these. All right. Yeah, all said and done, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So they're going to draw their cards. Still holding on to that lofty denial. So they could go land Sky Scanner and be able to counter us, I suppose. They did find one of their tutelages. All right, Duress and Warmonger. So, yeah, I think we just get in for six here. And they've got the denial, so I guess we'll play the the salad first before veto. Alright. Alright, we got round two. Cool. We'll see you in round three. Alright, round three. This hand needs some help, but I think because we have the taunter, it's just 
like I said, one of our strongest cards. It's hard to hard to not keep a hand that's got it. I mean, granted, we don't have the black mana, but I'm hoping we can get it at some point here. All right, well, they got a lot of one threes. That's, they are uh, shock proof currently. All right, well, that's not shock proof. I'm gonna shock it. So well, we can actually do the warmonger here. But I think keeping them off a bunch of mana is a little bit wiser. I might even sack the... Maze Mind Tome's a good card. I might even sack the... Uh, well, I guess I don't have a choice now, but... Um, I was going to say if I draw the land for like Crypt Lurker or something, but that's alright. Magma. Alright. So they're definitely all in. There we go. That's a good draw. So we can do the Crypt Lurker now and I could discard like a Imp maybe, but Imp blocks the Pegasus. So I don't I don't love that. Might make more sense to just jam the uh, Crypt Lurker. They could double block here. I kind of doubt they would, but yeah. Um, so I can't do Imp plus Grasp either. I guess we just do the Crypt Lurker and we're staying busy enough where I probably don't sack or discard anything. Maze Mind Tome is so good. Hmm. Kind of surprised with no plays there. So we can do Arsonist first. We can sack the arsonist to the hobble fiend. Okay, well, not yet, though. So we'll get in with these three. I'm fine with that trade too. Oh yeah. No blocks is also fine. All right, take the trade. We get ping. Not gonna grasp. Get our damage in. Play the imp, and we can block the Pegasus. We still have death touch. All right, so they're trying to burn Brightus here, so we definitely have to block the prowess creatures. still gives us a blocker, so I think I'm okay with that. 
And now they don't have burn bright mana either. They do have four more life because of Maze Mine Tome. That's important to note. Uh, we can block one of these. Take two, three, four. Magma, all right. So we're at Taunter mana now. We're at eight. So likely just jamming the Taunter here. We can get in with a Warmonger. I mean, we can force him to pop the Tome, but I don't like that so much either. I think we just jam a taunter is the the main part of the plan here. The other part of the plan though is do we get in with these two and leave ourselves only two blockers? If we have two blockers and they have burn bright, we take six, seven, because we can block two ground guys. So three seven it's still not lethal so to me it's probably worth it to just uh get in for uh six here they didn't have to pop it there I'm kind of surprised they did we didn't have lethal They did have a card they wanted to keep on top, which is kind of scary, but... So we'll do the, uh, the Taunter, and now we can block this and, like, the Magma. So the most they could do with a Burn Bright is six. All right, they did have a Fate's Fetters, however, which makes things a little more challenging. So two, four, five, and they're at nine. So we can sack, because this takes away activated abilities. So we can sack two, four, five. So if they have a shock, we go to six. That gets pumped. That would be lethal. I guess we we kind of need this though to win because we have to sack the taunter to get in for nine five eight nine sack the taunter grasp the shield mate i guess we take it all right unfortunately they had a follow-up too which also makes this a little more challenging So if I play the Blight thing and I have Grasp, how am I looking? I attack with Warmonger, they take it. They attack with five creatures, we have three blockers. We block, 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 and Grasp the Pegasus. I guess so. We'll get in for five. All right, they rip the shock. So I think we can win this match, by the way. I think this match is very winnable. They didn't really impress me. They drew three cards and still, like, basically by pure luck beat us. I feel like we can win this. Uh, they do have a lot of one threes though, which makes our archer slightly worse.
Two threes look decent against them, though. Three twos look great against them. Anything I want to do to stave off aggro better? Not really seeing it. Yeah, I think we just run it back. I feel I feel highly favored in this match, just based on what we saw. They're basically aggro with staunch shield mate. Maze Mind Tome in your aggro deck to like refuel your hand. Like we should win this. We should definitely win this. Not with that hand. Alright, we'll keep this one. So I guess we'll dump uh, a Hobble Fiend and maybe a Replicator. I can't really... I'm surprised they didn't attack there. Uh, I guess we can freebooter here. Hmm. Wizardry and Dragonfire. Well, we'll take the Dragonfire. Um, so we can block Hobble Fiend. Yeah, it seems fine, actually. They deal one to us. So, we'll get in with the Freebooter and play a Crippler and a land here. No sacks. I think we take it. We're gonna, if they have something to kill Lurker, I'd rather just smash in and start gaining a ton of life. Yeah, just try and ride Vito to victory here. Sure. Alright, guess we just attack and kill him then.
All right. So we just won on a mult of five, which I hope indicates to you a little bit why I thought this match was pretty favorable on our side. Like they do have the burn bright. They have multiple wizardries. We could do the archer to just ping tokens slowly but surely. It does. I mean, we already have double arsonist. Hobble fiend does look a little bit worse against tokens. It's just an important card for our deck. But I could do like an archer instead. That also randomly just kills an arsonist. And a 3-3 body looks good. Okay. Maybe that's wiser. Even though it ups the mana curve of our deck a little bit and makes Replicator worse. Having all the ways to ping seems good to me. I think we're going to dump the standard bear for like a cage zombie or something. Just a better body. Like cage zombie makes them play two spells for their wizardry. Whereas... Like, yeah, I, I don't really like the standard bear so much in this matchup. We have to cut another card? Whoops. No, the standard bear. You're gone. I want the zombie. All right. Well, we got a good hand here, despite Hobblefiend not being optimal. Still a good hand. That's a good draw. All right. We'll probably just drop the... Uh... Well, we got some choices. Let's do the Freebooter, actually. We're going to take damage from the Magma, but I want to know what I'm up against here. Defiant Strike, and then they have Immolator. Watchdog. So not a hand that looks like it's going to slaughter us yet. Which is a good sign. Immolator, yeah. Veto, yeah. Well, that did good things for us last time. Let's do the... Uh, let's do the Thalid here. What I like about Thalid is that... Uh, it just it just looks good. I guess it doesn't look good against Scorching Dragonfire, but it looks good against the rest of their board currently. All right, so now we can do a couple things. Are they gonna kill our Freebooter to get Defiant Strike? I don't know if I care about that. Let's do uh, Cage Zombie plus Arsonist, I think. Although, you know, Hobble Fiend actually looks pretty good here. Because now they, they can kill our Freebooter with Immolator, but at least we get sack value out of it. I like that more. And maybe they just want to Immolate our Hobble Fiend. That, that is another thing they can do. So they got a couple unknowns in hand. No attacks, no plays, huh? Interesting. Oh, the scythe. That's that's pretty good. So I think we do scythe. We're gonna equip the salad. Alright, so in response, we sack it. Get in. And pass. Alright. So now we can go side on 
Hobble Fiend. And we can get in with these two. It's fine. Burn bright. So could sack arsonist plus token? I think we will. Big trample damage through too, and uh, pass. Okay. So, I mean, we've got loads of options here. I think we equip the size on the rebooter. And then we get in for seven. And then we'll play the archer and finish that off. All right. So, felt like it was a favorable match. I'm glad we could take the win off of a mold of five and then just slaughter him in game three ended up going 3-0 which is very nice very nice to get a lot of loot here so we can open some packs now Let's see what we've gotten Sovereign. Basri. Cool. Harbinger is extremely strong. It's almost out of place how strong it is. In the uh, in the rest comparatively to the rest of the core set's uh, power level. But Green creatures are supposed to be strong, so maybe it makes sense. Temple of Silence, and finally. All right, another successful draft. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one.